Hi everyone. One of the th- thoughts that comes to people's mind when they think about containers is is CH root the basis for isolation? Is CH root the basis for jailing a particular container process? Well, the thought process is not wrong. I will not say it, it is wrong, but due to some inherent flaws with the in the way which in which CH root was designed, uh, a cautious call was taken by Docker to use a mount point as the root file system instead of using a CH root. So for those those people who do not know what CH root is, you know, if you look at the current application, the root is a slash, and if I list the app, uh, the contents of the root folder you'll see that you know there's a bin folder here this is hyperlink not a hyperlink the symbolic link and then there's a lib folder here there's lib64 and there's an s bin folder also the shell the bash shell or the dash shell that you typically launch when you bring the operating system up is in the slash bin folder so when the operating system comes up boots up it looks for the shell application within the bin folder. So what it does is there's an init process which gets created by the kernel. It forks itself and tries to run the shell in the slash bin folder. Now, for if I change the root of the application to some arbitrary folder like temp, as you can see here, there's no there's no content here. So when you change the root, the operating system will expect a shell to be run and it look for a shell based is the relative path of this new root which is temp and since there is no content here the ch root will fail however in the new root folder that i have created i have copied the bin lib lib64 from the slash the root the actual root to this folder so if i try to do a ch root into this folder the ch root command will work but what is the problem with the ch root command as you can see here i have written a small program so once i do a ch root into this particular folder i can run a program a malicious program which can get the root access the actual roots access and then probably create havoc on a system so how do i do that so i as you can see here is ch root to a temporary directory here and then I go all the way up for I will go all the way up four times and then what I do is you know I change the route to that particular location and then I run the shell from this that particular location so which is that location that's the actual route and how did I do it I did it programmatically with the actual ch route it was not with the uh, ch root to the command line it was not possible so let me see show you that so let's say let's say i say change the root to new new root so present working directory slash and what are the contents the same as what you see in the new root so whatever was there in the new root is the same as these are the same content that you see in the new root can i chill break no I'm not able to do it from the command line but can I do it programmatically so let's run the program and see what happens so I'll say dot slash a dot out now where, where am I I mean the shell prompt is gone that's the first problem so oops isn't this the main root yes now this program once it gets access to the main root it can do lot of things provided you know it gets access to the root user as well so this is a potential limitation with ch root due to which you know docker decided to use mount point as a means to carry out the the file system manage the container isolation through a file system which is done through mount thank you for listening